Good morning, brothers and sisters. As we begin our online worship service today, I will read to you Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that confess His name. Let us pray. Father, we praise You, we glorify You, Lord God. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa kadakilaan mo. Thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity that we have the chance to praise and worship you through online. Thank you, Father God, for all who will be joining us today. Bless each and every one of us. We pray that you open the eyes of our hearts. Speak to us, O Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for another day that you have given us good health and safety in the comfort of our homes and we pray that you heal all the sick during this pandemic lord god heal our land lord god we ask you lord god that you bless each and every one of us we ask you lord god that you bless all the leaders in the government that they decide what it's what is right and what is best for our country we pray, Lord God, that you bless the whole Philippines, heal our land, Lord God. And we take this opportunity, Lord God, to thank you for blessing our church, FCCF, and that each and every members, O oh Lord, are healthy and safe. Please continue to be on our presence, Lord God continue to protect us oh lord god and thank you lord god for all your provisions may your presence be in every family lord god dwell in our hearts lord god we pray we lift up everything to you and we ask you lord god that you bless each and every one of us during our struggles during our challenges and during our success may all be in your glory lord god we Bring back all the glory to you, Lord God. We honor you. All praises and honor and glory to you, Lord God. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa pagmamahal mo. We ask you, Lord God, that you bless us to continually put our faith and trust in you. And that we will always be obedient Christians, Lord God. Bless our hearts, Lord God. Transform us every day. By the renewal of our minds, O oh Lord, and to the person you want us to be. We ask you, Lord God, to cleanse our hearts, purify our hearts, and that we will accept every word that comes from you. Thank you, Father God, for everything. We leave up everything to you, and all this we ask in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us hear and sing together with our music ministry team and ready our Bibles and notes for the message. God bless you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. As we worship our Lord today, let His praise resound in our homes. Let us declare that Jesus is our victory in every battle. Our hope rests in His great love. He is God and will always be.
Good morning. Nakautang na po ba kayo? Have you ever incurred a debt? It was a joy spending, but it was a sorrow paying. Napakasarap gumastos. Napakahirap magbayad. Do you remember the feeling of being burdened by that debt? Remember the time when you have a credit card and your payments were past due? The problem was you could only pay the interest but not the principal. And so, your debt keeps on piling up. The credit card companies have collectors who will pester you until and unless you pay everything. They will call you again and again in your office and even in your house during unholy hours to pressure you to pay up. It was a good thing that the government has put its foot down on such shame tactics of the credit card companies. Remember how you felt when you were able when you were able to finally pay up that debt. Alala niyo po yung nararamdaman niyo nung nabayaran niyo na yung pagkakautang ninyo. It was such a relief. But do you know that we have a debt that remains outstanding throughout our lives. And it's a debt that I pray you would be more than glad to pay over and over again. And you wouldn't mind that it remains outstanding. Open your Bibles in Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10. It says, Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves, for the one who loves another, has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This morning, we will talk about our debt of love. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for once again giving us the opportunity to worship together even virtually. And we pray, O Lord, that you would continue to speak to us as we continue our series on the book of Romans. Speak to us, Lord, for your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We often hear that we can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. It means no matter how good an act is, if it is not done out of love, it is just an obligation. It is just a duty. Yet when we do it out of love, it is not just an obligation, but it has become our passion. It is no longer a duty, but a devotion. Love colors not just our giving, but actually love colors everything. And that's why we have to remember this. We can obey without loving, but we cannot love without obeying. You know, the Apostle Paul just commanded us that we owe taxes to the government. We have studied that last week. According to Romans chapter 13, verse 7, it says, Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue, to whom revenue is owed, respect, to whom respect is owed, honor, to whom honor is owed. We are to make sure that we settle our obligation to the government. With the government, we are obliged to pay. We don't need to love our government to pay our taxes. We are required to pay for it. I know it would be easier for us to pay our taxes if we really trust that the government is using our taxes properly and there is no corruption. But 
whether we like it or not, we have no choice but to pay our taxes. But there is a higher obligation that we need to fulfill. Our debt of love to one another. Verse 8 commands us, Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Owe no one anything. In the New International Version, it goes like this. Let no debt remain outstanding. Note that when we settle our bill, when we settle our financial debts, that's it. Panagbayad ka, tapos na. It's done. But when it comes to our debt of love, it remains outstanding. In Romans 13, 8, we see that owe no one anything except to love each other. In the New International Version, except to love each other is translated the continuing debt to love one another. Another translation goes like this, the perpetual debt of love. You know, there's a third century theologian, Oregon, who wrote, the debt of love remains with us permanently and never leaves us. This is a debt which, which we both discharge every day and forever owe. That no matter how much we pay our debt of love, it will never be settled. We should never say, and we could never say, I have loved enough. And this is a debt that we should never get tired of paying. For this debt, as we pay it, will not make us poor. Someone wrote this. The more they pay off this debt, the richer they will be in the things that is paid. The more they pay of this debt, the richer they will be in the thing that is paid. Now, one of the debts of love that we owe to people is that we share the gospel with them. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 14, I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. And so, as much as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. That means that if we love others, we will share the gospel to them. We owe it to them. Pagkakautang natin na ibahagi sa kanila ang Ibanghelyo. And that's also the reason why we decided to suspend our physical gathering as a church. It is because we want to protect not only our church from COVID-19, but also to protect our community. It is because we love our community. It is not out of a lack of faith. It is out of love for others. And that's our main consideration also. If and when we decide to gather as a church again physically. Now, let's read verse 8 again. Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now note the conjunction for. Here we see the reason why we should love others. It says, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Now, pansinin po natin that the words has fulfilled is in the present tense. It means that when we love, we have obeyed the law already. Pakinggan niyo pong mabuti ha. 
It means that when we love, we have actually obeyed the law already. Na maaari po nagtatanong kayo, Pastor, isn't it that the law cannot save us? What do you mean by fulfilling the law? So we don't need to obey the law, di ba? Well, in a sense, yes. In Romans chapter 3, verse 20, we see that no one can be saved by obeying the law. It says, For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. And so we see that no one can be saved by obeying the law. The law, as we're talking about here, is represented by the Ten Commandments. No one can be declared righteous by obeying the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments cannot save us, cannot give us eternal life. The law serves only as a mirror. It shows that we are sinners, but it cannot help us or offer us a solution to save us from our sins. But our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. According to Romans chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, But now, God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. And so here we see that we cannot be saved by the law. And so it is the Lord himself who obeyed the law. And that's why in Romans chapter 10 verse 4 we see, For Christ has already accomplished the purpose for which the law was given. As a result, all who believe in Him are made right with God. Christ fulfilled the law. And so when we believe in the Lord Jesus as our Savior, we have been declared righteous. He lived a righteous life. He was born sinless and He lived sinless and so that He is the rightful Savior. That's why He is the only one who could die for our sins. And when we believe in the Lord, His righteousness is imputed upon us. He paid for the penalty of our sins. And then when we believe in Him, His righteousness has been imputed upon us. We have been declared righteous. Now you may be saying, so, Pastor, hindi natin kailangan ang kautosan. Lalo na ngayon, ligtas na tayo. Now that we are saved, we don't need the law. Ibig sabihin, we can live the way we want to live. Di ba, Pastor? Pwede tayong mabuhay sa paraang gusto natin, kung ano man ang gusto natin gawin. But you have to remember this. That doesn't mean that because we're already assured of eternal life in heaven, we can live the way we want to live here on earth. That we can do whatever we want to do. That's not how it works. Yes, we cannot be saved by good works. But once we are saved, we now do good works to thank God for His salvation. Hindi tayo maliligtas na mabuting gawa. Pero kapag tayo po ay naligtas na sa pamagitan ng pananampalataya kay Jesus, gagawa tayo ng mabuting gawa upang pasalamatan ng Panginoon na nagligtas sa atin. Yun nga yung mababasa natin sa Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And so here we see, we are not saved as a result of works. 
Good works cannot save us. But when you go to verse 10, it goes like this. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, we are not saved as a result of works, but we are saved for good works. Na tayo'y kanyang nilikha upang iukol natin ang ating buhay sa paggawa ng mabuti. And so, still, we need the law to obey. We don't become anarchists when we became believers. With the debate right now about doing away with the moral demands of the Bible because they claim that love wins. Love wins. Mas maganda raw na maging loving tayo kaysa maging tama tayo. They claim that love is the only thing we need. They claim we don't need the commands of the Lord anymore. O pinipili lang nila, they cherry pick which command of the Lord they want to obey. But look at what John Stott has written. The truth is that love cannot manage on its own without an objective moral standard. That is why Paul wrote not that love is the end of law, but love, but that love is the fulfillment of the law. That love is the expression of the law. For love and law need each other. Love needs law for its direction, while law needs love for its inspiration. Obeying the law is the expression of our love for the Lord. In fact, one time, an expert of the law asked the Lord, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to, and he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Pansinin po ninyo, a second is like it. Meaning, you cannot say you love the Lord without loving your neighbor. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now, if you would look at the Ten Commandments, the first four commandments not to have any other gods than God, than Yahweh, not making images for worship, not using His name in vain, and to make sure that you have a day of worship, the first four commandments has to do with loving God. Now, the last six commandments has to do with loving your neighbor. That's why Paul wrote in Romans 13.9, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment. The rest of the Ten Commandments, the remaining six, are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Notice, the commandments are summed up in one word. Love. We can try to obey God out of obligation. We can obey because we have to obey. We can obey because it's our duty to obey. We can obey just because we are afraid that He will punish us for our disobedience. We can obey God without actually loving Him. But that's not really an obedience that will glorify God. Why? It is because God wants us to obey Him out of love. Ang nais po ng Panginoon, susunod tayo, hindi dahil napipilitan tayo, susunod tayo dahil mahal natin siya. Kaya nga tatandaan po natin, 
We can obey without loving, but we cannot love without obeying. Maaari tayong sumunod ng hindi nagmamahal, pero hindi tayo maaaring magmahal ng hindi tayo sumusunod. I like what William Barclay wrote. If people honestly seek to discharge this debt of love, they will automatically keep all the commandments. They will not commit adultery. For when two people allow their physical passions to sweep through them, sweep them away, when two people allow their physical passions to sweep them away, the reason is not that they love each other too much, but that they love each other too little. In real love, there is at the same time respect and restraint, which saves from sin. Christians will not kill for love never seeks to destroy, but always to build up. It is always kind and will always seek to destroy enemies not by killing them, but by seeking to make friends of them. Kasi kapag kaibigan mo na sila, hindi mo na sila kaaway. If they become your friends, they're no longer your enemies. Christians will never steal for love is always more concerned with giving than with getting. They will not covet for covetousness or in the Greek epithomia is the uncontrolled desire for what is forbidden. And love cleanses the heart until that desire is gone. And that is why we read in Romans 13.10, Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. We obey not because we are merely obeying a list of rules. That's external obedience. We obey because we love the Lord and that is internal obedience. Alam ninyo, sabi nga, the rules do not make a relationship but a relationship has rules. Religion only has rules but a relationship has rules. Kaya nga sinasabi natin, it is not by religion but by relationship eh, that we are saved. Someone wrote, Love may satisfy every claim of the law, but nothing can satisfy the claims of love. Love may satisfy every claim of the law. Loving one another, loving others is the fulfillment of the law. But nothing can satisfy the claims of love. When we obey without love, we will get exhausted. Mapapagod ka sa pagsunod eh. When we obey with love, we will get excited. Ulitin ko ah. When we obey without love, we will get exhausted. But when we obey with love, we will get excited. Gustong-gusto mong sumunod sapagkat mahal mo yung sinusunod mo. When we do things out of duty, we have this feeling that we have done enough. But when we do things out of devotion, we have this feeling that we want to do it more and more. Kaya nga sinasabi po natin eh, we can obey without loving, but we cannot love without obeying. Maaari tayong sumunod ng hindi nagmamahal, pero hindi tayo maaaring magmahal ng hindi sumusunod. At ang ating pagsunod ay pagmamahal sa ating Panginoon. At ito ang importante. When we put our faith in the Lord, not only that the Lord has saved us, 
Ito po yung mababasa natin sa Romans chapter 5 verse 5. God's love has also been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Hindi lang pala kaligtasan ang binigay sa atin nung tumanggap tayo, kundi pati pagmamahal sa Diyos. We now have the love to obey. Hindi mo pwede sabihin, hindi mo kayo mali ng Diyos kasi His love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We now have the love to obey. We just need to step out in obedience to the Lord. Binigyan na tayo ng Panginoon ng pagmamahal upang tayo po ay makasunod sa Kanya. I like what uh, Warren Wiersbe has written in, uh, in his Bible Exposition Commentary. He said, As believers, we do not live under the law. We live under grace. Our motive for obeying God and helping others is the love of Christ in our hearts. Nawa po dahil sa pagmamahal natin sa Diyos, tayo po'y magiging masunurin sa Kanya. May it be that because we love the Lord, we will live obedient lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that even the love that we will express came from you. We thank you, Lord, that when we have put our faith in you as our Savior. You have poured out your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Not only that you have commanded us, you have also given us the power to obey. We thank you, Lord. That not only that you have exhorted us, but you empowered us. Thank you, Lord, because you have given us everything that we need in order for us to obey you. And I pray that we'll be able to glorify you with obedient lives. And Lord, if there's anyone here listening right now who has not accepted you as their Lord and Savior, pray that from his heart he would say, Lord, I am a sinner. I cannot do anything to save myself. Thank you for sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die for our sins, to pay for the penalty of our sins. And I believe that you have accepted that payment for he rose again from the dead. And so, Lord, I accept the Lord Jesus as my Savior. I trust only the Lord for my salvation. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to speak to everyone who, who participated in our online worship. And I pray that we will always glorify you with our loving obedience. Lord, we continue to pray for our country. And I pray that you would heal our land. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we transition from modified enhanced community quarantine to general community quarantine, I pray that you will continue to sustain us and protect us from COVID-19. Thank you, Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen and amen.
Yeah.